Connors T, how are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast and our new series on mythic places. This episode is the story of a stunning rock formation in County Antrim, which was almost definitely formed when volcanic magma made contact with the cold ocean waves. And if it wasn't formed that way, it was formed this way. Aaron will tell us all about it. Now, if you are in the Dublin area, there are still tickets available for our show in the Wild Duck. That's happening on the 12th of May and we're very excited about it. This podcast is brought to you by our supporters at Patreon. You can join them over there at patreon.com forward slash candlelittales or you can make a one-time donation to the PayPal button on our website or you can like and comment and share and give us a review and do all those things to help us grow. But for now, enjoy. Aaron, tell us a story. He ambled and moved. Huge sloping strides, crashing into the ground. His arms were as big as trees. His hands giant. His face muddled and clouded in confusion as he stared across the sea. His massive chest swelled and rose as he breathed deeply and he bellowed a roar of frustration across the Irish Sea. Defiantly, he wanted to walk across the ocean to face the man who is claiming to be a greater giant than he. Ben Donner was the greatest giant Scotland had ever known. A huge, fearsome beast of a man. His hair reached the sky itself. He could crush a man simply in his hands. And he wanted desperately to get his hands around this so-called Irish giant. A man who claimed to be bigger than nine men, with great blonde hair and all of the wisdom of this world and the next in his thumb. Ben and Honor did not care for wisdom. Strength always defeated brains. Smart and agile men always fell down dead next to Ben and Donner. His huge sloping back bent down as he uprooted a tree in frustration and cast it into the ocean. The tree stuck, he thought. He walked towards the tree and realizing the ground beneath his feet was shallow enough to let the water sweep in and around him. His fear of the deadly depths of the ocean dissipated in a moment. He looked darkly down towards the deep depths of the ocean and thought for a moment it might have been the first thought he'd ever had clear a moment of purity something struck him from on high if he could make his way across this ocean like the way the tree was sticking in the sand in the shallow salt water he might be able to walk across and face this Fionn McCool he spat at that thinking now the frustration growing and anger bubbling in his bones he walked back crushing stones beneath him, stomping his way to a tall cliff. Rocks of jagged shapes hung all around him, and he pulled a great slab from the earth. 
it cracked all the way around and his hand seemed to form it in a nice shape until he pulled and tugged and pushed it into the earth. He moved it towards the ocean and flung it. It landed then, sticking out of the sea. He leapt and landed on top of the rock and with glee, he thought he could finally see a way in which he could make his way to Ireland. And so he went back to make his causeway to Ireland. Now, Fionn McCool was not quite sure what was coming towards him on the horizon, but he had heard great disturbances, bellows and shouts, demonic rage-like incantations seeming to be flung towards the island of Ireland from the north. His scouts had seen a terrible disturbance way off in the distance, flying rocks through the air, landing, and cries of despair, cries of anger, cries of battle, his name being bellowed out. He knew he was being challenged, but he did not know by who, or by how many. He told Una, his loving wife, he would have to go off and fight and face once more a challenge he was unsure of. Una was fairly used to Fionn McCool's goings. She would always wait patiently in their beautiful home on the top of a beautiful hill. She only had certain misgivings. He off, rambling away, would not always come back on time, and she might have to spend too much time in the house all alone. She had some complaints, of course, not just being left alone by this brilliant man, the leader of the Fianna with his great big beautiful blonde locks, burly muscles and fantastic stories. She didn't love the fact that he hadn't built her a south-facing house as she had requested. A north-facing house was cold and damp. He also insisted on having the house surrounded by boulders. Potential cover, he claimed, in case they ever got invaded. She only knew that she couldn't grow the flowers she wanted to and oftentimes stubbed her toe when she was going down all the way to the bottom of the hill to draw water from the well, which was another painful duty she always did. But this day she wasn't too sad to see him go away. After all, she was fairly used to it. Una went down to the hill, got a pail of water and trudged back up the way to their house, avoiding the many large rocks. She had seen her husband off and he was going to face some form of a fight. She knew he'd be all right because he had his wits about him and the many Fianna to help him face whatever would come his way. She did not expect Fionn McCool to run back towards her so desperately, so scared and so in need of her help. She almost laughed like a schoolgirl to see him come up and grab her dresses and her skirts in his hand and beg her and plead her to help him because he was all out of ideas. Una, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. There is a giant after me. Even all of the Fianna, if they were to rally around me, couldn't take this giant beast down. He's after me for the stories he's heard. He's bellowing from the north to face the giant Fionn McCool. Clearly the stories of my escapades and grandiose killings of old have gotten away and gone to Alba the high-hilled Alban plains where the Scottish have talked about Fionn McCool in even grander forms. They've made me a giant in their stories and I, 
I've often been kindly perceived as one, but not today. I am not a giant, and I cannot face this beast coming towards me. Una, he'll kill me. Save me, save me, please. Una patted her husband on the head, calming him down, and she said, All right, okay, get in there now and do exactly as I say. You'll have to do exactly, mind you, as I say. Now, first things first, off with your clothes. Phil McCool looked at his wife and thought very strangely about her timing for asking him to undress himself. Then he did what he was told, and she swaddled him with a great cloth, gave him a wheel of cheese to hold on to, and put him into a large bed that she claimed would look like a cot if she swaddled him around and make him look like a baby. Fionn McCool nearly opened his mouth, but, ah, not a word. I can hear some rumbling in the distance. And sure enough, the great booming sounds of Ben and Donner came down towards them. Huge rumbling bellows. Ben and Donner is here to fight Fionn McCool. Where are you, Fionn McCool? I'm coming for you. As this voice echoed around Ireland, everyone cowered as the steps that he took seemed to shake the very foundations of the land, until he came to the hill where he found Una waiting for him. Is Fionn McCool not here? The great giant bellowed towards Una. Oh no, I'm afraid he's not right here right now. Uh, if you'd like to wait, uh, I can take a message for him. What is it you're after? I'm Ben on Donner and I'm here to fight Fionn McCool, the giant of Ireland. I'm the giant and the greatest, fiercest beast of a man in Scotland. Oh, you're a giant, is it? Right. Huh. Is that what passes for a giant over in Scotland? Huh? Of course, Ben and Donner was quite shook to see Una's lack of appreciation for his enormous size. Usually people cowered away from him, but this woman seemed to look him up and down and shake her head as if disappointed by his great girth. Um, do you mind if I wait for him? So, uh, because I'd really like to fight him when he comes back. Hey, sit down there now and I'll make you a cup of tea. Una boiled a pot of water and, well, brought him out the pot. Then she realised that she'd have to do something. So she turned to Ben and Donner and said, Now, Ben and Donner, if you're going to be waiting here, I'll put you to work. You see, the sunset is so fabulous, my husband, the great Fionn McCool, picks the house up and turns it around so I have a nice beautiful face of the sun set each night. The northwest is always the nicest way to face when you're watching the sunset, I've always said. But he turns it around in the morning for the sunrise, but he wasn't here last night. So, would you mind turning it around? South facing is where I'd be like to face for the day, you see. It's an easy chore, I'm sure you'll be able to do it yourself. Now, Ben and Donner was perplexed it was, after all, quite a big house. He'd never heard of any giant moving a house of this size around every day, twice a day. But anything that Fionn McCool can do, Ben and Donner can do better. So, Ben and Donner heaved and he moved and he sweated as he picked their house up with a furious effort and landed it to point the house south facing. Una smiled, and then she asked him, after that was completed, to fetch some water. Well, now that you've that done, I might ask you to do one more wee job my husband always does. You see, there's a well at the bottom of the hill, but I don't want to be walking down today, and 
when my husband's around, well, he always uproots this tree and drives it down into the ground to get the spring, you see. So he makes a well up the top of the hill for me. He fills it in because he doesn't think he likes it up there. He prefers to do the chore every time. So would you mind? And so, once more, Ben and Donner thought to himself, anything that Fionn McCool can do, Ben and Donner can do even better. And so Ben and Donner picked up the tree and, uprooting it, drove it into the ground, digging it, turning it, twisting it, eventually until he felt the water push past his hands and gladly he sat down and with one gulp he drank the pot of tea that Una had made for him. He began to wonder though, where was this Fionn McCool? Why wasn't he here? And was this really his wife? And so he glared at her and shoved his head in the door, sniffing around. Mm, I smell someone in here. His, his eyes landed on the large, hairy, rather strange looking baby. Who's that? Ben and Donner asked. Oh, that's our weak, small child. Baby Fionn. Of course he's not as big and strong as his father, but one day he'll grow up to be as huge and ferocious as Fionn McCool. Ah, oh, he's a bit sick and weakly looking though, don't you think? Ben and Donner looked at the large, very formidable size of a man that definitely was also dressed as a baby, felt confusion stirring around him, and then he saw the baby squeeze what was in his arms and water seep out of it. What's going on there? Una, quick as a flash, realized she needed to do something and said, Ah, oh, now, would you look at that? He's after squeezing the water out of the stones, just like his father. We had been wondering would he be able to do anything like that at all, but he's really quite strong, actually, I suppose. Have you ever tried that? Now, Ben and Donner was very confused. He'd never heard of anyone squeezing water out of stones. Water out of stones? That's not possible. Oh, no, it is. Go ahead and try. I mean, we've plenty of rocks outside if you'd like to give it a go. Ben and Donner walked towards the heavy rocks and boulders that were scattered all around the house and he picked one up and sweating now he crushed it in his hands but pebbles and sand fell about his feet. He continued to mash and crush and belt and savagely destroy all of the rocks that were scattered around the house until he sat down in a heap wailing, no one of those have even dripped a drop of water. What am I doing here? I've come all the way from Scotland to feast the great Fionn McCool, but I can't even do his daily chores. I can't even do his baby's job of squeezing water out of a stone. I'm no giant. I'm a, I'm a con. I've only faced people and fought them in order to try and make myself feel good. He snuffed a big, huge lump of snot back up into his nose. Zuna was quite glad to see that it didn't land anywhere near her house, as the tears falling down his face were creating a pool at the bottom of the hill. Oh, can I do don't you worry about that. Uh, you're fine. Come on. Buck up there, wee giant. And he tried to soothe the huge colossal giant in the shape of a lump of a man as he picked himself up and bounded away. I'm going back to school and don't tell Fionn McCool I called a dinner when you're coming after me. Ben and Donna ran back to the north of Ireland and there he saw the line of stones that he had driven down into the ground all the way from High Hill to Album all the way from Scotland. He had driven the stones into the seabed to make his causeway to walk to Ireland to face Fionn McCool, but he could not face him, and he did not want this 
giant amongst giants, this Irish beast, this ferocious being from surely the other world to come and find him in Scotland. And if he ran back the way he'd come, he was leaving a fairly clear sign of where to follow him. And so, after every step, he pulled the stone that he'd landed on out of the bedrock and threw it over his shoulder. Turns out he was quite accurate with his throwing. Every one of them landed on the north tip of Ireland. And they're still there today. You can see them at the Giant's Causeway. This podcast was produced and edited by Oisín Ryan and Alan Holman. You can find out more about us on our website, candlelittales.ie. And we're on all social media, so like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Candlelit Tales or send us a message or get onto our mailing list. For more videos and live streams, like and subscribe to our Candlelit Tales YouTube channel, which now has a Candlelit Tales for Kids playlist. Hashtag Candlelittle Tales. Liking and subscribing to our channel really helps us grow and get to more people. And if you're able to give us more direct support, you can chip in a few bob at patreon.com forward slash Candlelit Tales or make a one-time donation through the PayPal button on our website. We also do really like to hear back from you with your questions and requests. So please feel free to contact us directly or leave your question in the comments section below. Because what we really want to do is get these stories out there. Share them with as many people as possible. So anything you can do to help, we really appreciate. And we really appreciate you listening. Gurmila Magar.